Uh, we're going to actually get into the engine. We're going to find out how it operates, how the different parts interact with each other. Before we get started, though, I, I want to make a distinction. There's two types of engines out there that we're going to be dealing with uh, in small engine repair. One is a two-cycle engine or a two-stroke engine. And it's the type that you find on chainsaws and weed eaters. It's the kind that you mix oil and gas together. We're going to deal with that at a, at a later date. Right now, we're going to be dealing with lawnmowers, uh, power generators, uh, log splitters, those kind of engines where you actually add oil to the crankcase. Okay? That's called a four-stroke engine, and that's what we're going to delve into now. I've removed a lot of the bolts already so we can get right into the engine. The first thing we're going to remove is the blower housing. Then we're going to remove the spark plug cable and just kind of toss it aside. And I've already removed most of the head bolts. I just have that one last one. And the head will come off. There's two types of four-stroke engines dealing with the, the valves. There's the one called a flathead, and the valves are on the side of the piston. And the head is narrow. It, it's flat, if you will. The second type is what they call an overhead valve, where these valves are then placed directly in the head and they're over the cylinder. We'll be dealing with that at a later time, but the reason why I want to use a flat head for you is it's easier to illustrate the different uh, machine cycles, or what we refer to as the four-stroke engine. If you understand how a small engine operates, what's required, what it's doing, when it's doing it, it'll be a lot easier for you to diagnose what's wrong and, and troubleshoot and, and then repair that area that went wrong. So let's get into this. The first part of a, a four-stroke engine is what we call the intake stroke. Now a stroke is the full travel of the piston in the cylinder from top dead center, where we're at right now, to bottom dead center. Now, it doesn't matter if we're coming up or going down. That's considered a stroke. So again, the first one is going to be an intake stroke. Before we get in, even into that, look, there's two valves right here. One's a little bit larger than the other one. And the top one, if you'll notice, from the carburetor, there's a tube, and it enters right there. A valve is like a door, if you will. And as you turn the flywheel, the door will open, or the valve will open, okay? And in this particular case, it's the intake valve, and it lets in the air-fuel mixture that's going to go into this cylinder right here and eventually explode. The bottom one is our exhaust valve. See, it just opened right there? And if I remove our muffler, and shine the light into our muffler port, you should be able to see light coming out of this, this valve. That's for the exhaust to come out of the engine through the muffler. Now, a piston has piston rings. And what that allows is a tight seal between the cylinder walls and the piston. So when the piston travels downward, it actually will create a vacuum. And with the intake valve open, it's going to draw in air and fuel mixture and bring it into the cylinder through this valve or this doorway. This is called the intake stroke, by the way, the very first one. Now, if you're wondering, how do we get the air fuel mixture into the cylinder? Or when the exhaust valve is open, how do we get the exhaust fumes out of the cylinder, that's accomplished by the head. Can you see how it's recessed out right here? That's to fit the two valves, and it's recessed right into where the cylinder will be, so the gases can flow in or flow out easily. Notice also that there's electrodes sticking right through here. That is your spark plug. When the timing is set just right, at the right time, a spark will emit 
and cause the explosion. So, back to our first stroke, our intake stroke. The piston is moving down, creating this vacuum, drawing in air-fuel mixture, and it's pulling it into the cylinder. When we hit the bottom, what they call bottom dead center, the intake valve closes, and the piston starts to travel back upward. Notice both valves are closed. This is called our compression stroke. They've found that if you compress air and fuel, it explodes better. So right about here, before we hit the very top, right about there, the spark plug is going to emit a spark and an explosion is going to create. With the momentum of the flywheel and the lawnmower blade, it's going to carry it over the top. And this is now starting our power stroke. As the fumes expand and burn off, it's going to force powerfully this piston back down the cylinder, just like that. All right, that's our power stroke. And when we hit bottom dead center again, notice what happens. Our exhaust valve opens, and our piston is going to start coming back up and forcing those spent fumes out this doorway, through this port, out the muffler. That is called a four-stroke engine. What do you think is going to happen next? That's right. The intake valve is going to open up again, and the series is going to continue on. Well, let's put this new knowledge to some practical use. Let's create a hypothetical situation where you went through Craigslist and you found a rototiller that you were interested in or a riding lawnmower and you wanted to see how much life is still in that engine. Well, we could use an advanced uh, diagnostic tool, very simple, but pretend now that I have the head gasket on and the head bolted to the engine. We're at the top dead center of a compression stroke. Both valves are closed tightly. We would remove our spark plug and put compressed air into that port. Then what we would do is we'd come down to the engine and we would listen next to the muffler. And if we heard a hissing sound coming out of the muffler, what would that indicate? That's right. That would indicate a valve that's not seating properly, or it might be burned, or it might have a crack in it, and air is whipping by it and not giving us a good uh, compression. If you have weak compression, your engine won't run, or it won't be strong, or it'll bog down easily. Uh, say we heard hissing sound coming out of the carburetor. Well, we would know that that would be our intake valve that's not seating properly. Maybe the valves need adjusting. If you open up your uh, dipstick and you hear deep in the engine a hissing sound, that would indicate that air is passing by the piston rings. What that could mean, a piece of carbon that was built up on your piston and it might have broke off and scratched or deeply scored your cylinder and air is whipping past it. Or it could mean that this engine had heavy use and the piston rings have worn down. Say we heard hissing sound coming out of the, the head of the engine, right? That could indicate that we had a blowout of our head gasket somewhere, maybe between here. And the head gasket might just need replacing. All right, just some thought. Uh, I'll catch you on the next one.